Uh, welcome to the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's May the 26th, a reminder that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Uh, so let's work through the agenda. So Uli, you noted status of the student project for pull request viewing, and you've added Bootstrap 5 inside eCharts. Any other, oh, oh, let's see. And I would like to put one on a replacement for Mark Wait as scribe slash meeting launcher. Okay. Any other topics we need to put on the list? Yeah, I would put uh, one. Um, so collaboration with open, open source design. Uh, well, I, we can discuss it, uh, your topic, Mark. So Oleg, did I capture that well enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just a second. I struggle with finding the right meeting Google Docs. Oh, uh, because oh. Uh, yeah, the UX seek still uh, references the old uh, doc and the calendar. So I reported it uh, last week, but it hasn't been updated. You're correct. That is the document that I can't edit. So yes, I need to fix that. Let me. I've, I think my past attempts to fix it in that Google count in the calendar entry have all failed. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it just yeah, can I fix it for you, but please send me a link because I don't know where you, you bet. Know. Yes, here's the link. I'll just paste it into the chat for uh, here's that. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry about that. I had tried to fix it last week and was unable. Okay. So any, any other topics we need to add to the agenda? Okay, then let's take on first topic, Uli and status of the student project. Okay, we are, are currently implementing the first uh, portlets. So the student uh, already provided a pull request for my Warnix plugin and a pull request for the code coverage API plugin. Um, the, well, both portlets are not yet ready, but they are already in review process. So I think in one of the next meetings, we can present them in a demo again here. And currently I, yeah, I can present the pull request. I'm not sure if that makes sense. So. I think it would be much nicer if we can see them in the real system. So if that's fine for you, uh, just the heads up that we are working on the portlets and we need some more time to finish them, to integrate them into some plugins. And it takes two or in four weeks, we are ready to present again the portlets in the running system. And uh, Simon already started a topic in the developer mailing list to gather some feedback from others. But I think uh, we will obtain the most feedback if we deploy it in a Jenkins instance, as Oleg su suggested already. So maybe it takes only a, some time until we get some more feedback. So are there any questions on this topic? Not for me. So when you say when you say deployment on a Jenkins instance, is it on one that you or your students are managing? Um, uh, or something else? You no, know, uh, actually the demo could be done on one of our instances, yes, of course, but uh, I think Oleg mentioned that we can deploy it to our ci.jenkins uh, yeah, if it's stable enough so one can see the results there. Okay. Sure. In that case, don't, don't hesitate to, to mention it uh, if I can help on that topic as part of the Jenkins Infra team or Timia. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Don't hesitate to mention us and, uh, and at least just let us know so if there is any 
uh, let's say instability that uh, was not foreseen that that can mm -hmm. happen that's not a problem it's just important that we share the info so now i have it i will share it inside the team as well don't hesitate to tell us if uh, if you need anything on that topic we could help yeah okay great thank you Uli. thanks very much so um, that sounds very promising. So Simon's, Simon's work, you said, was in Warnings NG and in code coverage. Both those, I believe, are installed on ci.jenkins.io. Mm -hmm. So it would just be an upgrade of those plugins and we would get his capability. I assume the plan would be to release the, the capability in a general availability release of the plugins. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, so then, then we would get the get that automatically that's great or we would get that as a result of upgrading the plugins wonderful well the only thing which is not yet available is the port uh, the dashboard plugin which we need to install as something that as a, so the plugin that is showing all the results uh, this is not yet installed ah, but the I warning see. plugin okay. installed the code coverage plugin is installed the forensics api is installed so everything else is there <laughs> But uh, the view is not there. So, speaking of that, uh, where do we stand with CI Jenkins IO as code? Because once uh, we have it uh, fully automated, uh, we would be able to quickly experiment, maybe even to deploy preview environments. Mm -hmm. uh, if we go all in, I know that Damien was looking at that, but I'm not sure what's the current status. So, uh, I'm currently, as for today, writing an email to start a discussion on the infra mailing lists to explain the plan. Um, the idea, uh, what we discussed first privately for a good reason is that it was just brainstorming. So now we're switching the brainstorming and writing the plan publicly. The status is um, we want to focus on managing only the agents as God for now. The reason is because if we start to do a big bang update from the current that use for the, that instance configuration to full config as code, that will be a nightmare and breaking. We want to do first it, uh, tiny iterations that we deliver, which mean to answer the, the topic here, the plugin uh, management as code is not foreseen for now, uh, at least not for the upcoming three weeks, because that will be too much work on one side. We first want to have uh, something and the agent what is the proposed priority. However, that's a proposed plan that can be changed. So don't hesitate to raise your voice uh, following my email later today. That means manual and uh, install and uninstall <laughs> to put things uh, clearly. Yeah, so the problem is not with manual install, the problem is with evaluating because of these plugins uh, need configuration, right, Ulla? Well, they are configured in the user profiles at the moment. So mm -hmm. any locked in user can do something. Yep. You anticipate my next question, but yeah, that's the point, uh, Ruri. Uh, we will have to define, um, yeah, th that's not the topic right now, but we will have to discuss before installation, where is the plugin storing its configuration on the file system? So we are sure that in any, case we can know what is happening and how to roll back if needed. Yeah. Currently it's only stored in the browser. Oh, oh no, cool. sorry. Okay. So, oh, no, forget it. Sorry. Um, uh, we, that was our first plan, but in the last meeting, uh, I think Tim suggested that we store it in the user profile, mm -hmm. in the Jenkins yeah. user profile. So it's now in the Jenkins user profile. Yes, that means okay. user you... profiles can be technically managed as code. Practically, it's almost impossible to manage them as code from JCASC plugin. Okay. So what it means is that any user would have to basically manually go to the profile page and configure it. So that's why I was bringing up whether we could have defaults or whether we could have uh, um, views. Because, for mm -hmm. example, you can imagine that there is a view like the dashboard view plugin. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, there you can just uh, put some uh, default uh, mm -hmm. layouts, default reports, uh, so that any user visiting this page can go this, let's say, analytics yeah. uh, tab, or well, I know that they are saying dangerous words, but yeah, for example, not analytics, but yeah, 
so just uh, a view which can be configured and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah whatever so well i'm just creating ideas and probably i should do that in github issues but yeah thanks for hearing me out yeah i think we need to spend some more thoughts on this configuration especially for such a big instance as our instance okay any other questions here all right so that one really the the status of ci.jenkins.io configuration as code was really uh, sort of a part of the discussion around that okay got it next topic then the new version of the eCharts plugin mm -hmm. this version still is uh, in progress uh, but uh, i already showed last week or last or two weeks ago um, that I'm trying to make the trend charts uh, configurable. So maybe I can share my screen. Mm. Uh, I can't share it. Mark, can you give me the rights? Okay. Okay, now it's going. So <clears throat> let's see. It. So um, what we currently have on the top page here is uh, the trend charts and currently the trend charts are just for starting from the top and going down yeah there are a lot of trend charts here because this is my demonstration instance normally we don't have so many uh, trend charts so um, up to now these trend charts are not configurable that means all what you see is uh, hard coded somewhere in in the server side and what i now or what I'm now adding is a configuration button for all of these trend charts. That means, for instance, here the forensics trend where you can see the commits in there. You can have a trend chart that shows the authors, the commits, the modified files. And then we have here a configuration button. And if you press this button, you now get a configuration uh, dialog. And in this dialog, you can for instance, uh, change the chart type. This is something that a plugin must support, of course. But here, my plugin can show up to four different trend charts. For instance, I can show the total number of files in my project. And then you can say, OK, how many bills you would like to consider to show, and yeah, how many days you want to look into the past. And then you can uh, save this dialog. And then the trend chart here immediately changes, and you see a new trend chart with some new options. Um, I integrated this kind of configuration for the forensics plugin, for the warnings plugin. So, for instance, in the warnings plugin, you can configure also some different trend charts. You can see the new and fixed issues. For instance, if you are clicking this and say, OK, let's say I want to see the last 25 bills in my trend chart, and you save, then you see uh, not the totals anymore. You see the number of new warnings and the number of fixed warnings. So this is maybe somehow useful for teams to show different trend charts for different plugins. So of course, the configuration requires that a plugin <laughs> offers different trend charts. But using the eCharts library, these trend charts are really easy to implement. So for instance, Tim uh, already uh, created the test result trend chart also with eCharts. And here, you also can configure the trend chart. Currently, we have no different trend charts just one trend chart but at least you can now uh, change the yeah, number of bills you would like to see in it for instance so this is something i'm currently adding in the eCharts plugin it's uh, running with bootstrap 5 so all these trends are rendered on the client side only but there is uh, no connection to the server currently and yeah this is something which I want to even uh, extend so, for instance, that we can create uh, different sizes of the charts, etc. 
And in the end, maybe we can also use this uh, dashboard where we can drag and drop those trend charts. But this is something yeah, which needs some further exploration. So this is uh, my plan currently for the eCharts plugin. And one thing which I would like to have a little bit feedback is um, about um, the configuration. So currently uh, the configuration of that, such a trend chart is uh, split into two different parts. The first part is some plugin specific part. For instance, here you can choose which trend chart you would like to show. And then we have some kind of, uh, let's say, general configuration where you see uh, if the, the uh, domain access should be a build number, or if we should show days, uh, or if we should consider maybe, yeah, let's say, 20 builds, or how many days we should look into the past. And I'm wondering if I should make the general configuration global for all charts. That means if I change it here, then all other charts will be updated as well. Or if it makes more sense to have a configuration per chart. So this is something I'm hoping to get a little bit of feedback in the next weeks to see in which direction I should implement it. So any questions on this new idea here on the job page. I think it looks great. Uh, I'm not sure where you would place the control for a global setting. So for me, just the placement on the UI lobbies for uh, keep it local to each chart. Mm -hmm. But but that's, I guess, a, a design thing. And I am not a designer. Yeah. C currently, you see, uh, when you open the di dialog, you have it in every dialog in the lower part. And one question is, if I change a value here, uh, it, it changes only currently one chart. Uh, and the question is, if it should change the other charts as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it would make sense because from the meaning of the parameters, from the width or from the number of bills, it would, I think it would make sense to have it the same value for every trend chart. But I'm not yeah, really sure. Other tools like uh, Grafana works work exactly like that by default, so it makes sense uh, to follow this uh, behavior. And yeah, whomever wants analytics, they will likely want to just eventually have uh, various UI controls. Like you can just select a time frame, etc., on the yeah. chart and then uh, zoom in. So if you're familiar with Grafana UX, yeah, eventually we could have something similar. Well. No hope, but yeah, maybe uh, yeah, uh, more navigation UI for analytics reports. Mm -hmm. I think that we can just learn from the best and follow the example. Okay. Okay. So what I also thought about is currently you have the configure button for every chart, and maybe it would make sense to have some kind of yeah. This dialogue is a little bit old school here. Uh, uh, one uh, button that configures the whole dialogue here. For instance, which trend charts should be shown on a user basis, or how is the order of the trend charts and things like that. This would make sense in my yeah, opinion as well. So currently this is hard coded on the Jenkins side. But maybe I'm not really interested in the last successful artifact, so I want to hide it as a user, and I want to show these trends charts on the left and on the right. So this would be possible with the same uh, dashboard view kind, which is Simon proposing. So maybe yeah, we can try to use such a framework as well here on that page. And then we need a global configuration where we can add portlets on this page, et cetera. If that makes sense, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think that makes sense to me. That sounds wonderful. Makes sense. Not, still not sure. That, that, that could be a wider topic. Maybe don't hesitate to ask over mailing list uh, also to have uh, feedbacks. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that, that, that means a wider audience. Mm -hmm. uh, on my side, to be quite transparent, I'm not really at ease by using metrics inside Jenkins UI. I've tend to avoid as much as possible to go to the Jenkins UI. So I don't have any use case that could help here on my side mm -hmm. to retake decisions. So I'm sorry, I cannot help, but I think a lot of users are doing and have the same need as the one you have. So that, that's why widening that question could be really interesting and get you uh, mm -hmm. valuable feedback. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm a, I'm a heavy user of, of metrics inside Jenkins. So yeah, uh, I, the, I think there are a number like me who are using the, the metrics, the, the warnings and the code coverage API views. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's the best thing to uh, release a small iteration and, and let the users uh, talk about the feature and then we will see how we can improve it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there are no other questions, I think we can continue with the next topic. Okay, then I stop sharing again. So next was next topic was from Oleg feedback on using Jenkins funds. Uh, yeah, so well, I'm trying to somehow uh, keep whatever Twitter community excited and post various things, uh, sometimes questionable things from time to time. And yeah, I encourage everyone to do the same so that we can repost more people from the Jenkins account. Uh, but yeah, one thing I raised is actually about uh, using of funds because we have some funds in all effects account funding. Uh, you see other threads in the developer uh, mailing list. And yeah, just uh, ask in public, okay, so how should we spend them? And yeah, here's the answer. And design UX improvements, 50% uh, from 45 four votes. Yeah, again, don't consider it as a kind of official polling result or official decision, but well, it's a curious data to get anyway. Um, so yeah, what I'm bringing up to the team is that um, yeah, actually, if you have any ideas in mind, we have uh, things like LFX crowdfunding, LFX mentorship, so we can fund either official paid mentorship or official unpaid mentorship. Um, yeah, we have an opportunity just to define our own programs because LFX mentorship is, let's say, Google Summer of Code as a service to some extent. So, yeah, we can organize various events and, well, for example, maybe food is a uh, yeah, if there are some programs you would like to run, uh, you can do it through this program. And yeah, money is something uh, we can discuss. And yeah, I have another topic below, which is also related to money and outreach. So you can press it unless there are comments. Uh, but yeah, highlight uh, yeah, UX uh, design improvements uh, is highly ranked. Like, I would surprise anyone. Uh, by telling so in, about Jenkins, uh, but yeah, uh, we have money and we could uh, use some of them for these activities. Okay. No questions? I, I think that, that matches my hopes, so I like that a lot. Thanks for doing the poll. What a great way to ask the question. Yeah, this is a good idea if we need some designers for instance for icons or something like that uh, this would be really a good idea to have someone paid uh, for it to draw it <laughs> because uh, as a developer normally it's not so easy to create a good looking icon <laughs> for instance so Oleg, you had the next topic as well on collaboration with open source design. Yeah, uh, so a few weeks ago, like we discussed uh, at the governance meeting, I was invited to join 
uh, open source design as a student committee meeting. So, well, it was a group of 10 people uh, with different backgrounds, etc. But open source design is a well known initiative focusing on open source design, uh, specifically on user experience, artwork, design work. Uh, they have uh, multiple tracks. Uh, one of uh, them is um, related uh, just on facilitating uh, proper design, best practices. Um, more important, they have a uh, list of, of projects. So I added the link below if you could navigate it now. So they have a list of, of projects which are specifically focused on user experience design. And well, yeah, I'm planning the official welcome from the Jenkins project, but I think it would be nice to just have us listed there um, as UX seek. Uh, maybe if you're allowed to bring some contributions, uh, maybe not, but it definitely doesn't hurt to be listed there. And yeah, also I was thinking about adding some ideas to the Jenkins, uh, to the job store. So if you go to open uh, design uh, jobs to the link, uh, you can see that there are uh, multiple types of ideas, including ones which are just gratis. So basically, well, feel free to contribute and we will appreciate that and some schwag, uh, for example. And uh, there is also a opportunity to pay, to put uh, paid ideas. So the gap that, that paid ideas are supposed to be well, largely paid. So let's say some bonus like $50 or $100, uh, what they consider as uh, uh, paid. So for that, um, they offered me to send a message to the um, uh, discourse about uh, uh, how it would be possible because they would be also interested in these uh, small bonuses, so pretty much like freedom sponsors and other things uh, work. Uh, bye bye, Ule. Um, but yeah, at the moment, uh, they don't have uh, approach for that. But yeah, what I am thinking about is that if you have some ideas, for example, I'm mean, still yet to create the Jenkins rule logger. And I may have a few other requests. So we are invited to post uh, these opportunities on this board. Um, there are some people visiting them. They're also reposting opportunities in the social media. So theoretically, it could help uh, to find someone. You mute, Mark. The idea is we would we would post this jobs board here is actually for tasks that might be done or bigger picture things it's not just for so design a logo looks very much a task and whereas design contributors is looking for people so both those are allowed here and now you said that and we could fund so there's a paid option as well that we could we could use then to incent yeah, uh, but well, it depends on uh, what exactly we do. So it's not like we can uh, throw money here and there. We don't have much money, mm -hmm. but we have some. So we could uh, put them to use. And uh, yeah, basically how it could work. Uh, yeah, we can just use this job board. We could just maybe create a, a separate repository for issues or use Jenkins IO with uh, artwork label like we do now um, so that we could also promote it on our, um, our side. But yeah, I believe that we could come up with so many ideas there. Uh, but yeah, you just need people to write them down. And it's, actually a, it's actually a Google form. But once you submit a Google form, they have magic, which converts a Google form to pull requests. And uh, well, I'm curious to know more about this magic because it would be useful for some Jenkins use cases. Uh, but um, yeah, basically, we can also submit a pull request uh, against their website directly with all this information. It's not documented, but yeah, they confirmed that it's possible. Excellent. So it's, and that Google form is this button. Yeah. So yeah, well, maybe it's not even a Google form. But yeah, they have this form, you fill it in, and then once you create that, uh, magic happens and there is a pull request submitted. Nice, elegant, that's really elegant, okay. Yeah, it could be a good uh, implementation for some of our use cases in theory. Uh, 
yeah, maybe it could be some combination of GitHub actions, or it could be other kind of automation like integration with our chatbot. I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely possible uh, to create something like that. And for some use cases, it might be useful. That yeah, that looks really. So so the next steps then would be. Uh, uh, form submits pull requests. All right, go ahead, Oleg. Next steps. Yeah, so next steps, basically, what I encourage you to do, if you have any ideas, etc. I already started the Google Doc uh, where I basically put a brain dump of ideas where we could use artwork. For example, yeah, like Jenkins True Log uh, logotype for the Contributor Summit uh, in June that should have sailed, but in principle, it would have been good to have a logo. Or, for example, I put idea of a special uh, logo for Tipton Client plugin. So, ideas like that. And yeah, if you have something in mind, so I can totally imagine that yeah, even for Git plugin for Jenkins, you might use a logo. Why not? Uh, so yeah, if you have such ideas, if you can formalize them a bit, uh, then yeah, maybe we could somehow have this brain dump and then convert uh, them to ideas and post them. So the next meeting is uh, on the next week. I intend uh, to uh, send a introduction from uh, myself um, um, to the discourse uh, and uh, also intend post some uh, jobs uh, requests. This is all my action items from the previous meeting. So, yeah, meeting is monthly, so yeah, by the end of the month, it makes sense to actually do action items. So we'll see. Oh, no guarantees at all, but uh, yeah, just showing the context. Mm. So, and that that document, could we link to that? Mm, I haven't published it. Oh, okay, uh, got it. Okay, so, so, so somewhere so, in my work, uh, if someone is willing to contribute, I can make it public. If nobody is interested, uh, then yes, that's a good story. Got it, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if... Maybe it's a question for me because yeah, I should definitely send a summary to the mailing list, maybe even to the developer mailing list. I use invitation for others to contribute. Uh, but yeah, right now that's what we have. Great. So maybe I will uh, build a flow. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? Um, on open source design, I don't think so. So we also shared some expertise in terms of organizing events uh, because they actually look in, uh, into what they could do with their budgets and how they could uh, put it uh, because they have small budget based on donations. Um, and uh, yeah, they are wondering how they could use it efficiently. So yeah, we shared some experiences. Maybe eventually we could uh, do a joint event, but, uh, but yeah, it's rather hand waving at this point. And yeah, I'm not sure what they will have been wise to do that. But then technic uh, technically, it's um, reasonable. So, and when you say a combined event, it might be something like a, a, a open source design event focused on the Jenkins project, or why that... not? Mm -hmm. Well, we already had the UX hackathon last uh, year with some offerings uh, to work on design, uh, but yeah, we didn't uh, have much traction for this activity. But we, if we engage with a Python community like open source design, I think it could be a win win. Especially if we provide quite a diverse set of tasks and not uh, drawing uh, 100 uh, versions of Jenkins. Uh, for meetups, so yeah, you can go out of the box, like 
uh, sending requests for icons uh, because we have an iconography reward dependent on the project. Uh, so unfortunate team is on there. So such requests could be definitely done. For example, plugin logotypes, etc., which could be again a bit more uh, different. So, for example, for Tikron, I offered that we use Tikron Puppy, but Tikron uh, Puppy dressed like a butler in Tikron colors. It might be completely terrible, I don't know. Or another idea in my brain dump was to just have Jenkins logo, but yeah, again, this Tikron Puppy, not a Tikron Puppy on a plate, of course, would suggest something different, but yeah, maybe a new type of logo. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, things like that. And yeah, if you, you're interested and want to get creative, I think you can invent a lot of such opportunities. Excellent, thank you. Okay, let's see, you, you had mentioned UX SIG logo. Um, do you want to, well, next on the agenda was me, a replacement for me is scribe and meeting launcher. So um, I'm donating a kidney uh, beginning the surgery is June 9. So our next meeting, I won't be available. Uh, do we have a volunteer? Yep. I'm volunteering to, to take over the next one. Okay, excellent. And given that volunteer, thank you very much. I will send the request to the advocacy and outreach SIG uh, to request permission, request permission for the CDF Jenkins Zoom account uh, to Damien. Any objections? All right, Damien, you are, you, are, you are chosen by acclamation. Congratulations. Nice, I will just double check the just the task list to be sure I don't forget anything. That means that um, I have to to start the call, to take the notes, drive the the call itself. Is there are there other tasks that uh, are expected that I should take over that? So Oleg, would we expect that he would upload the the recording to YouTube, or is that something that would be a different permission? Do we need? Is that something someone else would do? Mm, well, uh, there are multiple options because one of the things you can just record to the cloud um, and then uh, somebody can repost that or you can, um, yeah, you can get YouTube permissions. Uh, there is a curtain documenting uh, how to get YouTube permissions, but we are quite relaxed. We already have something, 14 content managers or so. Um, I'm still yet to update the job based on the recent YouTube monetization policy changes. Um, but yeah, it's documented, so please refer to Jeb Curtin, and there is a process uh, explaining how to get YouTube permissions if you want. Jeb 13? Yeah, Jeb 13. Um... I'm currently checking the Jet 13 and adding the link. Um, up there. I have the link. Jenkins uh, channel policy. Oh, does that mean that I need a YouTube account or something? Uh, I think you just need your Gmail account. Uh, I believe you have a Gmail address. Yeah, okay. I might need to create a new one then only for that because ah. I don't want to have a, a personal account on YouTube. So, okay, I will take care ah, of creating one. Yeah, okay. I'm one of those annoying persons. Yeah, good for you. That's great. Okay, not it. All right, Oleg, last topic, UX SIG logo. Yeah, so I'm just reviving uh, old logo, oh, sorry, old topic, because the current situation, if you go to a UX SIG page, 
And uh, if you try to post it on Twitter and whatever, you get to this uh, icon of two persons. And uh, it uh, looks pretty bad, especially in open graph. So yeah, my question to the team is, yeah, originally we discussed whether uh, we would like to have another log uh, job uh, Bruggen have, have created some prototypes. Um, uh, Jeremy Hartley has created some prototypes, but we have never selected anything. So I just bring it up to the team, uh, especially taking open source design, etc. Is that maybe it's time to actually have something as a logo, or maybe in the worst case possible to just get something like let's say uh well jenkins margaret uh, as a logo or the logo of uh, osla jenkins meetup please do not google that uh, but yeah putting it as ux seek uh, a logo would be hilarious i mean yeah well it be it belongs to memkins but uh, gen in general uh, i would be happy to <laughs> see that um uh, so yeah i'm just bringing uh, this question so if somebody uh, drives that maybe we could find this take at least a logo even if it's existing image because it's better than the current situation when we have no one as you see and could you i missed what what you had said what does it currently look like it's a uh, it's so, something yeah you have a so you go, go to the ex stick. So there is a square log resolution log of two uh, persons. So it goes uh, to open graph as well. And uh, well, square logos don't uh, look well in open graph at all. Um, and the yeah, especially log resolution. So when you link this page, for example, if you so what I do in Twitter, uh, if you're concerned about Jenkins user experience UI, feel free to contribute. We have user experience page link. And then this logo comes uh, right. to this tweet. Uh, so yeah, that's my key interest why I want uh, this logo to be replaced. Uh, because if you want to onboard contributors, yeah, this thing doesn't really help, and yeah, it would be a quick win. Yeah, so it it could be to reuse. It could be any one of these kinds of logos here in the artwork. That would certainly be better than that low resolution square image. I think I understand what you're saying now. This this image as an open graph image is looks really poor. Do, yeah. do, do you mind guiding us on how to see? Uh, I have no idea what open graph is, to be quite honest. So I've just opened the open graph page on Google right now. They have no idea what it's about, but. Uh, okay. Is it possible to show it here in the recording? Yeah, so it could help yeah can, uh, people? I'll show you an example. Just a second. Uh, not not this screen sharing. I can share right now. Yeah. So I was going to show you. So I opened the the page and I looked for OG colon um, annotations and there's this one OG colon image, and this shows me the page that is used for it. So if I open that. It should show us the oops, except I don't want to see the source. <laughs> so when I do that, it shows that's the an open graph is this standard that I think started with Twitter. Or Oleg, did you want to share your screen to show it? Uh, no, I don't, but uh, I'll put a link uh, just a second so that you can share it. Okay, uh, great. Yes, sorry for exploiting you, but yeah, I have some sensitive documents are open yeah. now and they don't want to forget. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Um, okay, so how we do it at the moment um, in, um, for example, meetups, etc. So we have a Google Doc. Um, Mark, if you open uh, the agenda, I put uh, the link there. Oh, you put it in the agenda. Okay, sorry. Thanks. Yeah. So then, yeah, you can uh, see. Um, yeah, it's basically our dump presentation, which is slightly quickly growing a bit too big. So basically, open graphs are standard size images. These standard size images slightly depend on what you use, but uh, it's basically 16 
to nine usually. And yeah, here we have uh, just long long Google slides where we put all uh, meetup, open graphs, uh, open graphs of pages it's and like uh, this, other uh, content. And uh, yeah, the good thing about that, uh, why I use Google slides, uh, well, actually you can just create image PNG or whatever in any editor, but here you can uh, create the image in Google slides and then download a particular slide in PNG and you get it automatically. Uh, so that's why I use that. So basically these are the images and if your page has metadata, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, etc., they show this image by default. Oh, that's the, the preview image stuff that we have sometimes. Yeah. Okay, oh, okay. Uh, I was failing to understand the, the, the okay. consumption part. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, yeah, and uh, there is also a description for pages, which is also goes through open graph uh, metadata. Uh, which we also use for some pages but yeah the images are quite sensitive especially for twitter because uh, yeah in twitter uh, you either post a, a link and then the open graph picks up and the entire image becomes a link or you can just attach the image but in this case this image won't be a hyperlink okay. so yeah seo tweaks uh, apply but yeah, it's better to use open graph okay thanks mm -hmm. that's clear yeah, and uh, yeah, I found uh, the image. I really want to our UX seek adopt and uh, to use this image as log until our goal is achieved. Uh, just a second. Uh, yeah, this one. So yeah, well, it's rather a joke, but yeah, I would definitely put it as a logo if I was the sick leader. Well, <laughs> maybe pretty fight version, but yeah, you know, uh, the painting. That, that's a classic. Yes, beautiful. Okay. Uh, I well, vote for the, for the HTTP uh, 50 errors on Jenkins <laughs> for this okay. one. Yeah, well, actually, about, I'm about to ask him somebody to create a more prettified version because this one just slap a Jenkins head on the page. So if somebody creates something, let's say, more well integrated, I think it would be hilarious. So I, I don't recognize the image. Is This isn't the scream by this is a different yeah, one. Yeah, it's the, the scream. Oh, it is. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because well, the author was from Oslo, so they decided that it would be a great logo for Oslo. Uh, I think it's meet up. Excellent. All right. Anything else on that topic? <laughs> Okay, hey, uh, any other topics we need to cover today? Mm -hmm. All right, let's call an end for today. Thanks very much. I'll post the recording later today uh, so that it's available. Thanks everyone. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.